Family definitely drives the picture. It is definitely the, the heart. And I think when you watch any kind of Rocky or Creed franchise, there's always something that's pulling at the strings. I got a text from Stallone about uh, maybe about a year ago. He said, uh, you know, would you mind have you considering playing this character again? I got this idea. It was a short text. It's Sins of Our Fathers, it said. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. It's a sort of Shakespearean, the Sins of the Father, and so on and so forth. And I thought that would be an interesting uh, melding of two different generations. You knew this was going to be a war, right? You knew that going in there. From now on, it's who wants it more? And who's got more heart? Two sons fighting for, for their names. It is sort of Shakespearean, whether you have a connection with your father or you're trying to have a connection with your father. It's another universal thing. People relate to it. In the world of boxing, the boxers usually have their sons usually following similar paths. You know, that's all they know. They grow up in the gym. They grow up around it. It's kind of natural that I would be boxing after Apollo, you know, that Victor would kind of naturally box after Ivan. Remember why you're climbing these steps. Adonis has to realize that his father was killed by the father of the man that's challenging him. This is the fight the whole world wants to see. And this is the fight he should take, unless he's afraid that history will repeat itself. So there's really every reason to accept the challenge rather than back off. Just the fact that who he is and what he is has to really be proven in the ring. What was important when tackling this film and trying to dive into the themes were uh, staying true to their journey, so to speak. And I think one that Adonis has always been dealing with has been the father and son story. You know what I mean? Being the shadows of his father, Rocky dealt with it with his son, Robert, you know, and then following that thread on as we come up with this new character, Ivan Drago, and his son. When we find Ivan Drago, he's using his son as the vehicle for him to come back and onto the world stage. His father, he's a tough guy, so he's not really showing him the love that he needs. The things that he really wants are values like family, love, loyalty. He's fighting for a better life. He doesn't feel that he's really appreciated as a son. Something went wrong, and I can't accept it. So now I'm going to use my son to come back and take my revenge on the world. He wants to be the champion, you know, and if you're in my way, I'm going to do anything at all costs to, to become the champion. I can relate to that, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's the dad that's pushing, you know, and that's where the dilemma comes, that's where the conflict comes. Most professional fighters want their, their sons to fight. They want their sons to follow in their footsteps. And in many cases, most, most sons want to do that because being a fighter is something different. It's not normal, you know, it's, it has a certain prestige about it. I would never encourage my son to box because first of all, he has so much to overcome, especially if you're on the top level. By the way, my son has to do the impossible. This is my father. He knows what he can get out of me. I know what I can get out of him. So there's almost a perfect mixture of balance. There's this unspoken agreement that we have, this bond where we understand what it takes to persevere in the ring. When he was about six years old, he drew a little card charm for me for Father's Day. And it pretty much defined our relationship from that moment on. And it was me holding his hand. So from that point on, I said, until he's at least 18, that's our relationship. He's going to be like an appendage. Every time I reach out, his hand's going to be there. Every time he reaches out, my hand will be there for him. I think my dad has always held me accountable for the man I was going to be. And I think Adonis didn't have any of that. It's a father and son relationship, and dad isn't there. He's coming back to the father he never knew. Rocky doesn't want to be, but he becomes that surrogate father. Turn off your brain, let your heart do the talking. And at the same time, every breath in his body is for the success of uh, this young man, who is the son of his former best friend. Count with right and cracking with left. You got that? Stand it right, cracking with the left. You never expect that. You have to have a passion, a love for the sport of boxing. You just don't box because you, <laughs> you want to join the fellas. You must love, you must have that, that feeling of, yes, I want to do this, and be willing to, to go to the limit to be the best out there. Looks like hell to me. Since you're going back to hell, you might as well get used to it. 
And it's very difficult to push somebody and uh, make sure that it's, it's positive, you're building, you're not tearing down, that you uh, make them understand that you have empathy for what they are going through. And there are a lot of times I would much rather be in the ring taking the punishment. This is something that people don't understand about boxing when it has to do with a, a father and a son in the corner. We're both agreeing to unite. We're coming together. We are putting ourselves in this situation where we know that we can prevail, that we're going to persevere over what's in front of us. Really, boxing is as large a life image as what's projected on the screen in, in Crete. I mean, uh, they actually projected onto the screen some of the emotion and the height of the emotions that we go through when we're uh, going through the, our dance. Very, very late in the story do I start realizing that maybe something else is important to me, my son. It only fires at the end when I decide to save his life instead of trying to win. And Adonis Creed is still the heavyweight champion of the world. I think the beauty of that story is that there is redemption and you can't forgive and you can realize that love is, is bigger than everything else in the world. Hey, Robert. I was just around in the neighborhood, so... Do you want to come inside? He's huge, and he's so strong. It's like, you know this Mack truck is coming every time. For the first time I saw Florian, I said, why isn't he in an NFL camp right now? He was a very, very, very big human being. Drago absolutely landed to Creed. If Sly has a feeling about something that should happen in a Rocky movie, you better pay a lot of attention. And as usual, he was right. Florian is an incredible find. To get the whole package is really rare. I mean, it went through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of guys. Dolph Lundgren was unique. He was great looking, fantastic body. Also, he could fight, so he understood it. Florian is the same way. He actually knows how to fight, for real. Plus, he's incredibly large and muscular. <laughs> I met Florian at the MGM, and he looked formidable. I felt the energy already, like, OK, this guy could, could be my son. Yeah, I could see that. He could take over. I never anticipated to, to go into the movies. But uh, my manager, who I used to fight for, he came with the offer that they were looking for someone. So I had to do some audition tapes. And then the feedback was very good. So my manager came up, OK, uh, they like you. Now Sly wants to Skype with you been familiar with all movies and he's like a childhood hero you can't really describe the feeling that you have when you see that Stallone is in front of you and that it's actually happening so we did a Skype session I had to prepare two other scenes for him and then everything went really quick You know, it's so impressive, the work that, that Florian's done. I mean, he, you know, was in Philly for almost seven months and away from home and training really, really hard. The level of dedication, it's just inspiring. I wasn't familiar with Florian. I wasn't too worried. He already came in as a pro boxer. He's such an overwhelming opponent. So every time he goes into the ring, it's always hell on two feet with two flying fists. So the challenge was to have control. You take him back and not make him actually hit the person, but make it pretend like he's hitting the person. You know, he was a hard worker as well. He, he picked up to that really fast. He's a really, really nice guy, super humble, eager to work and learn. Right, right. Block, block, block. Right now. We picked up chemistry really fast, you know, in the ring. We definitely started to get on the same page. He has a very good straight right hand. 
His ability to throw the punch and actually sell the power was amazing. He brings a lot of emotion and a lot of range to this role. It's a very layered performance by him. He's the perfect person for it. I can't, I can't imagine anybody else playing him. There's so much emotional stuff going on in this movie on both sides, on the Donna's sides and on mine. Ivan Drago has been established, but we haven't seen him in years. And so dealing with his son, I was able to, to really focus the film on what's you know beyond the gloves and what's beyond the ring. It's always been about family. Victor and Ivan aren't really bad guys. They're just people who have nothing to go back to, who have everything to win and nothing to lose. I think people are gonna be even twisted who to cheer for. Like, and that's what we wanted to create. Sly found me and kind of presented me to Steven and he thought that I'm the right guy for this role. I think we went outside the realm of like the cliche villain type and really dove into something that's really character based as well. Steven is the guy who I would say deserves the most credits on my performance here. I felt that under no circumstances, I can't let him down. He really opened himself up into the roles and the depths of this character. I worked with him day and night on my acting. He knew my story, so I always was talking with him right before the scenes to get in the right zone, to transport the right emotions, and he made me better every day. Florian's doing very, very, very well. And he's very good in the ring. His acting is really good. He's, you know, getting into these emotional places. And Steven is there working with him. We work very well together. And you couldn't ask for anything better, really. It's going to be fun to see what happens to his career. Like that, but you move. I'm sure you're showing that I got. You only get better if you surround yourself with people who are better than you or more experienced than you. And I learned so much from every one of them. Sly is like a mentor. Same for Dolph. There are two icons, and you grow up, especially as a boxer, you grow up with the Rocky movies. And they are a lot about taking those opportunity and work hard and achieving those dreams which seem unreal. I wasn't an actor before, and it actually happens now, so I really can connect myself to the Rocky franchise. What else is there to say? It's just another fight, okay? You got this. It really is like she's in the ring with him. We watch our opponents. Everything was a we. And that's something that we really took and, and put into the fabric of this film that Bianca and Adonis become a we. So she's in that ring with him. And, and that's certainly different than the first time around and, and has so much to do with the reality of boxers, spouses, and girlfriends. Spouses of boxing are super strong. It's a team, you know? It's not like Donis is fighting, it's we're fighting. The concept of we versus I. I love you. I need you. Because we're a team. And it takes a very strong woman to go through that process to see your husband, your boyfriend, get hit. That's unbelievable. When each of these incredible strong women, they witness their loved ones training hard, running five, 10 miles a day, getting hit, sacrificing, all those things that we normally do with no big deal, but they see that it's more painful than normal. It takes a strong man and a strong woman to get through that, to see that transformation take place. Captain. We definitely didn't want to have the cliche background supporting role in this film. Tessa and I wanted to be sure that our conversations on screen really reflected how women speak when they're alone, when they're together, and the things that women would talk about, or let's say even the way we would speak about something. He hasn't really been himself. 
and I get it. Because he's going through a lot. Trust me, I know. I've been there. It was so exciting to have Felicia back with us and for she and I to get to really inhabit scenes together because I just looked up to as a woman and certainly as a performer. So there's a lot of life imitating art. You know, the warmth I think that we feel personally for each other gets to communicate on screen. I still have a box full of vinyl somewhere. If you ever want to make it right. I would love that. One of my favorite things about making the first Creed was getting to work on the music. In this second installment, we really wanted her voice to have changed in some way, to have grown. And it's after a period where she's trying to navigate her personal life with her professional life, and she maybe isn't making as much music. And so she sort of comes back with a vengeance. Yeah, sign. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I think it's hugely important that we have women in these roles, and not as background characters, but a huge voice in the plot and the themes. I was very happy to continue with this character. She's a big part of Adonis' life, you know? To have her close the gap in relationship between Rocky and her that's kind of distant, so to kind of bring them closer together and have them have a type of relationship I think was really important for this family unit moving forward. I think the thing that's always been so special about the relationship between Mary and Creed and Adonis is that she keeps him honest. You know, he decides to take this fight, which admittedly maybe is not the best idea. And for him, he thinks it's all about building his own legacy and also vengeance for the fate of his father. I'm gonna take it. Do not try to make this about me and don't pretend that it's about your father. She's a mother who cares about her son and we just didn't want to mess side characters. They had an opinion, they had a voice to be heard during his decision. I'll beat him. better. And the thing that I was really excited about this second installment of the Creed franchise is that I feel like it really gets to dive in and explore Bianca's relationship with Marianne. Bianca and Marianne having more of a relationship, you know, coming into the family with a proposal. It was beautiful. It, it, was, it was some really, really heartfelt scenes there for audiences to really see these two women bond, particularly at a time when Bianca is becoming a new mom. And you see how important that connection is between the two of them, that she becomes someone that Bianca can really look to for leadership and for guidance. With everything he's going through. With everything he's going through? You've been in his corner every step of the way. The thing that's also really exciting is to see the way in which Adonis's relationship with his newborn daughter is going to change him. One of my favorite moments in the film is when he's sort of having his own freak out and then he sees his child there and says, I know. Daddy's being a bitch. I know. You get the sense that he's deciding to be a better man and a bigger person for this very little person. Mm. What do you sing for us? No, I'm not your jukebox. I would go to war. <laughs>